Okay, so hopefully this is the last time I'm doing a review like this, sitting on a bed or on a chair. I'm in my new apartment. I'm in Southern California. I am no longer in Seattle. I've been recording on the road for months and it's been exhausting. So hopefully, honestly, this is probably the last week it's gonna look this crappy and sound this bad. Uh, so improvements are on the way. I have a PC to fix. I have like a couple boxes left to find. I really have one cable that I need to find before I can set up um, my lighting and have this not look like hot trash. So the quality will improve in the coming weeks. This is the last time this video is gonna look like garbage and sound like ass. So let's talk about this movie. Um, but first we gotta talk about the director, Matthew Vaughn. Um, I know he's capable of making good movies because I've seen some of them. Uh, X-Men First Class, great story, really good script, awesome casting. They did a fantastic job with James McAvoy as young Professor Xavier and with um, Michael Fassbender as, um, as young Magneto, as young Eric Lancashire. Nailed the casting, all the other actors, great. Special effects in that movie, a little wonky. Kevin Bacon, super underrated, fantastic bad guy. Love that movie. It's rock solid. Special effects again, a little wonky, but overall, tremendous effort. One of the better X-Men movies. Probably top three or four. I would put it up there with Logan, X2, Days of Future Past. It's it's one of those really, really good X-Men movies. Um, he did Kingsman, a gem. Great freaking movie. Again, fantastic casting. Samuel L. Jackson is a great bad guy. Colin Firth. Uh, just just a tremendous, great comic book movie brought to life. An incredible scene. The church sequence. Super hyper violent. Movie doesn't pull any punches. It's great. And then the wheels come off a little bit. He makes a sequel to that. Kingsman the Golden Circle. It's overblown. It's overstylized. The story sucks. And it's just not. And the, the villain, Julianne Moore's villain, is just dumb and goofy. And, uh, and it just seemed like... He didn't really care. Um, and then The King's Man, a movie that didn't get good reviews. I don't know how it did at the box office. I actually really did enjoy that movie. So for me, he's been kind of like, he's on, he's off, he's on, he's off. And I liked The King's Man. It was a prequel to Kingsman. He is doing another Kingsman movie, by the way. And, uh, and I enjoyed it a lot. It had some really good twists. People hated one of those twists very passionately. I actually thought it served start, served the uh, the story well. It served the story well, and I didn't think it was bad. I like the King's Man, and then this movie comes out. So Argyle, it's like a spy thriller uh, about a woman who writes spy novels and then finds that the things that are happening in her novels are also happening in real life. Sort of. There's much more to it than that. Um, the movie starts off really bad. Henry Cable plays, like, the least charismatic spy, which is something I thought I would never say. He and John Cena are, like, this kind of awkward spy tandem, which is weird because both of those guys, like, can ooze charisma when they want to. Henry Cable has the worst haircut you've seen maybe ever. Um, and then the movie, like, picks up steam as soon as Sam Rockwell's on the scene. Uh, or picks up steam as soon as Sam Rockwell appears in the movie. Like all of the movie he's in, he elevates the material here way, way, way further than it deserves to. But then as the movie goes along and some of the twists, the really, really dumb twists, and this movie is just like nonstop twists, especially in the second act. It's just like twist after twist after twist after twist. And it gets to the point where even Sam Rockwell doing his damnedest, giving his most A-plus effort, giving it the old college try, even he can't serve the material. Even he can't save this thing from itself. Um, it's over-stylized. Bryce Dallas Howard as um, Ellie, the lead character, seems like she has no interest in being there whatsoever. She has zero charisma. And that's sort of the point when you when you first meet her character and honestly through most of the movie. Um, but it just, it seems like she didn't want to be there. And when she's the main character, um, it, it really shows. And she doesn't seem like she belonged in this movie. Things get a little bit better near the end. Um, but this movie has like one particular twist 
that like upends the entire movie and has a potential to be really cool. The problem is it sucks and it's not told very well. The way that twist plays out, it's just like, a character's like, I'm gonna tell you what the twist is. And then the character tells you what the twist is and you don't give a shit because it's dumb. It's really, really dumb, but it had the potential to be cool. So Matthew Vaughn, what are you doing? Please get it together. I know you're capable. I don't need, I don't need your movie to have two completely nonsensical, drawn out action sequences that offer nothing to the story and just waste my effing time. Stop doing that. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You pulled it off in Kingsman with the Freebird sequence in the church and the murder because it served the story. There's shit in this movie that doesn't serve the story. I'm sorry for cursing. There's stuff in this movie that doesn't serve the story, so stop it. Just go back to making good movies, man. I know you can do it. I believe in you, son. You got this, Matthew Vaughn. Um, thank you so much for thank you so much for watching this review. Sorry, I'm a little tired. Just got back from the theater. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you find it helpful. If you didn't, that's okay. You can, you're still welcome to watch or not. Uh, if you did find it helpful, I hope you would consider subscribing. That would be great. And I'll see you next Wednesday, all you lovely people, at 9 a.m.